Guys, pickup trucks are getting very, very expensive. You tell this to us every day, but why? That's a great question, Andre. In this video, we're gonna give you 10 reasons why pickup truck prices are going through the roof. But before we do that, we need to lay some groundwork. Yes, so first of all, we're using some data from our partners and friends in the industry. Uh, we're talking about goodcarbadcar.net with sales data. We're talking about IC cars with registration data of new vehicles and also our friends at Car Edge. Yeah, you know, once upon a time, Andre, uh, pickup trucks were kind of the um, smart way of getting a affordable an affordable vehicle uh, that you could um, do everything with. Yes, but they became really expensive. In fact, outside the reach of most consumers. Yeah, especially now that uh, we're post uh, COVID and post supply chain, but certainly in the height of inflation. So let's get to it, Andre. Well, uh, before we do, uh, let's establish something. Yes. Uh, Ram 1500 uh, pricing right now is between 49,000 and 68,000. Um, Nissan Titan XD between 47,000 and 65,000. Regular Titan. Now, Toyota Tundra between 38,000 and 64,000. So you see these prices, including Sierra 1500, between 37,000 and $82,000. So wow. these prices are going higher and higher. And these are, of course, uh, full-size pickup trucks that we're talking about, kind of the meat of the market. Yes, and midsize also expensive. For example, Tacoma reaches up to 50,000 and above. We have, of course, the Colorado reaching $46,000 for base models. And we have a Ford Ranger reaching $55,000. That's not the new one. That's the current one. The current one. Yeah. How about F-150? Uh, well, F-150, you mean the current prices? Yes. According to Car Edge, the F-Series average retail price is $66,000. That's including the Super Duty. But that's a high number. That is a very high number. And, you know, if you really want to take your breath away, look at vehicles like the Raptor R, $110,000 and up from there. And yeah. if you look at dealer markups, probably more like $150,000, $160,000, Same thing with the TRX. But even, you know, let's call them the Cadillac of uh, trucks. And I'm talking about the big Dooleys. Uh, even those are now reaching easily $100,000 if you get the one with all the bells and whistles. And diesels. Yes. Yeah. So number 10 on, my, on our list, why trucks are so expensive is government regulations. Tell me about that. Uh, specifically safety regulations and also emissions. So let's take safety just really quick. Uh, this is not only driven by the government, but also insurance companies, right? Because, and also consumers, because you and I love safe vehicles for our families. Of course. Uh, who wouldn't? Yeah, but look at this. I have an example here. IIHS, which is an independent insurance-based uh, or organization, they just tested mid-sized trucks uh, with new stringent uh, safety crash tests, and most of them failed rear occupant safety. Yeah, and what's been happening with safety, of course, is the IIHS keeps upping the ante. In other words, they keep making the tests harder, uh, which make the manufacturers, of course, use more engineering, better materials, uh, more safety features to pass the next level test, and all that gets passed on to the consumer. Yeah, it gets more expensive. Yes. And the second part of this item is emissions, right? The government and, of course, many organizations want lower, lower emissions from internal combustion engines, and that can be expensive to achieve. Well, especially in diesels. I mean, obviously, the best example of that is DEF. Uh, uh, not only is that expensive as a system, it's also expensive for the consumer because now you're filling your truck up not only with diesel, but also with diesel emission fluid. Yes. So what's number nine on our list? Um, software is not free. Also <laughs> costs money. Uh, and uh, there has been, shall we say, a software revolution happening right now. Uh, and all the automakers have now become technology companies. Uh, and for instance, Toyota has formed an entire separate unit uh, with hundreds of employees just to create their latest, basically, infotainment system for their trucks. And yeah. that's expensive, Andre. Yeah. And I have also another example with Tesla because the Cybertruck is near production, right? Mm -hmm. And Tesla it will charge you $15,000 for full self-driving capability, which is mostly software, actually, because you do have you know, some cameras and maybe a couple of radar sensors. But software is a big deal. It's funny. There was just a recent uh, article talking about full self-driving and how um, pretty much worthless it is in the resale market. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. So, so but, m- maybe you're better off to get it monthly as opposed to buying it. Exactly. But still, the point is there that software is not free because everybody says, well, you know, hardware costs money, transmissions are expensive. But in order to control all that, because if the software fails, your vehicle, your truck is useless. Yeah, we have experience with that, Andre, needless to say. <laughs> are you talking about Hummer? You mean- yes, but okay. we don't need to bring up that again. Okay. What about number eight, uh, really profit-focused manufacturers, right? Yeah, so uh, obviously because of electrification, uh, because of competition, uh, manufacturers are now uh, building new plants, building new battery plants. Yes. Exactly. Uh, Ford is building an entire city. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. And these, this is, you know... Not hundreds of millions, but billions, if not tens of billions of dollars of investment uh, that the manufacturer, manufacturers are committing to. Uh, and uh, that's got to come out of somewhere. Yes. So, uh, I've, well, let's take Blue Oval City. So for this, you know, we, we've done these stories before. Stanton, Tennessee, they're building their new factory for electric vehicles. They're also building in Kentucky for their new battery plants. Um, all this costs money, like you said. And they're also... Uh, beholden to the shareholders, right? You know, you have to show profits because of your stock price and your financials. Yeah, and so, like I said, um, in the case of Tesla, for a lot of years, investors have basically absorbed the cost of all that infrastructure. But now it's time to pay the piper. Uh, and so that investment is going to get passed on, obviously, in higher cost of trucks uh, and cars. All right, what's number six, Andre? Well, number seven on our list... I skipped one, sorry. Yeah, let's not skip. Number seven on our list are new technologies and components. And I want to bring a couple of them. For example, headlamps and windshields, Mm. right? It sounds quite simple, isn't it, Roman? It seems like glass would not be any more expensive. (laughs) But I did some research. Uh, We're always the research. So a 2020 through 2022 Super Duty OEM LED replacement headlamps, both of them, cost $2,900, my friend. Yeah, we're long past those days when all cars you had either round or square headlights, <laughs> and you can go to your local parts store and buy one for like 16 bucks. And that, people complained about that, but you know, compared to what the new adaptive and you know, laser and gosh knows what else, I mean, there's a revolution in headlights right now. Uh, that's an expensive proposition. But it's also a safety item, right? Sure. You and I have talked about this, especially about like a Jeep Gladiator or a Ram 1500, where the, tr- um, the basic headlamp is not good enough, right? So, of course, we want better lighting to be safer at night. Uh, for example, a basic headlamp from Ram right now is about $149, uh, which is quite affordable, but that's not good enough, right? So um, LED-based headlamp is $873, and also, let's talk about windshields really quick. Uh, recently, we were doing some research on a used truck versus new truck. And the new windshield is like three times the cost. Yeah, because... From like $400 to about $1,200. Well, because also you have uh, a lot of now safety equipment that kind of resides in that little binnacle that's right above your rear view mirror. Uh, and I don't know if that adds or doesn't add to the cost of new windshields. I know, for instance, in a Jeep Wrangler, Gorilla Glass is a lot more expensive than regular glass. Yeah, that's a strong you know, special sure. coating or yes. special layering there. And I don't, I don't want to just focus on several uh, manufacturers. I want to do as many as we can. For example, Chevrolet heavy-duty headlamps are $1,800. So those component costs, also replacement and brand new costs, are very expensive. All right, number six on our list is, uh, and here, guys, we're not ch- trying to make um, excuses. We're with you. We want to have the lowest possible truck prices with the most possible equipment, but there is rationale behind why we're seeing such a huge spike uh, in new truck pricing. So number six is new internal combustion engine powertrains. Tell me about that, Andre. Yeah, well, this is the golden age of the uh, combustion engine, right? It could uh, be the last age of the combustion <laughs> engine. <laughs> so you mentioned the Raptor R. I just wanted to show you how much it costs. So regular Raptor, for example, I'm here in the configurator. If I want to select a 5.2 liter supercharged V8 for the Raptor R, I, I click on the button and it's $30,080 just for that engine. That engine is expensive. But let's not just look about these engines. Um, every mid-sized truck this year is going to turbocharging, basically, except maybe the Honda Ridgeline and the Nissan Frontier. The Ranger is, Ford Ranger is turbocharged. Tacoma will be turbocharged and hybridized. Uh, and the new Colorado and GMC Canyons are all turbocharged. So those technologies cost money. 
but they're basically hunting for higher performance and better efficiency. And, you know, on this list here, you also have transmissions, and obviously now we're getting much more sophisticated transmissions. So what used to be a relatively straightforward four-speed turned into a much more complicated <laughs> six-speed, which has turned into a very complicated ten-speed. Yeah, and those cost money, right? Yeah. But we like that. So you have to decide, you know, what would you give up to save some money, right? Uh, the more gears you have, the better towing performance you could have, you know, the better, better fuel acceleration, economy. better economy. But where does that balance lie? Um, it really depends on, you know, what the interest rates are doing and how much <laughs> money you want to spend. But that's another conversation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you also have emission control systems here, Andre, and that's true too. Obviously, as the government tightens down on uh, emissions, um, you need to get cleaner and cleaner trucks. And so that isn't cheap either. Yeah. Well, number five on our list is electrification. Oh, God. We, we have to say this. Yes. Um, so we learned many lessons from our Chargezilla Ford classic electric swap, right? Uh, because people always focus on raw material costs or battery costs, but there's a lot more to it that we discovered. Yeah, and if you're unfamiliar with that, we basically took an old Ford uh, pickup truck and uh, yanked out that straight six and replaced it with an electric motor and batteries. And uh, uh, having gone through that process, it's very expensive. And obviously there is uh, efficiency of scale. So when manufacturers do it, they don't pay as much as you know we did on a one-off. But nevertheless, uh, the technology is still in its infancy, infancy in some ways. Uh, and so uh, it ain't cheap. Yeah, and it has to do with small components. So it's easy to focus on big ones like motors and batteries. But what we learned is uh, inverters, little charger boxes, they all, the costs add up. And if you want fast charging, if you want high voltage, high current systems, it's exponential. The price just goes oh. through the roof. Raw materials, right? The more copper you have in there, the more it's going to cost to, yeah. to, to, to build it. So that's a huge part. And also hybrids. I want to bring that up too. Uh, Plug-in hybrids, because they combine <laughs> internal combustion with electric motors and batteries, uh, those systems are also very expensive. Yeah, sometimes people, they understand the concept that you've got two powertrains. You've got an internal combustion engine, um, and you've got an electric motor, but you do have two of them, right? <laughs> so and they both can break. Yeah. Or they need to talk to each other. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, so it is going to be expensive when you're, you know, chugging along with uh, two separate powertrains. Uh, and, um, you know, the, the time it takes for you to recoup that money uh, in terms of fuel savings is pretty long. But certainly the manufacturer recoups it right away uh, when they charge more for that, and, and as they should. Yes. So that's a huge part of why prices are going higher. Now, number four is inflation. So this is something we don't have a lot of control over. No. And actually, Roman, I have some good news. Yeah. Inflation is slowing down. So according to this recent data uh, from tradingeconomics.com, uh, it's uh, in June slowed down to about 3%. But still, our incomes are not growing <laughs> that fast. And the inflation is growing. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, when the manufacturers have to pay more for not just raw materials, but components and labor and everything that goes into it. Once again, that's going to get passed on to you guys or us guys, uh, and it's going to be reflected in the rising cost of new pickup trucks. What's number three, Andre? Number three is this clever game manufacturers try to play in order to maximize, I guess, their profit, which is packaging and options. Um, uh, I want to. I yes, want the old shell game that you you so uh, wisely did not win. <laughs> I lost this game. Where is the cruise control? Under which of these shells is it? Uh, nope, not the, that one. The cruise control is under the rear sliding window shell. <laughs> yeah, what Andre's talking about, of course, besides the fact that his well, – you, know, you guys know that. What okay. he's talking about is that the manufacturers are clever in the way they package equipment. And so if you want that one thing that is important to you, chances are it's going to be packaged in with maybe some other things that you may find less important or you may be able to live without. But if you want to get that one thing, you're going to have to get a whole bunch of other things. How about let's pick on RAM also. Sure. So I, I want to share as much as we can across manufacturers. If I want a 115 volt auxiliary power outlet in my RAM, mm -hmm. uh, Bighorn, which is kind of a more basic version of the RAM, I would have to get the Bighorn Level B equipment group that they call it that costs three thousand eight hundred forty five dollars. But they just want one thing: I want an outlet in my truck. You see what I'm saying? So they're packaging in many different ways. Well, I, I mean, I, I think the best example of that 
maybe the most egregious example of that is the Maverick and Cruise Control, right? Yes. If, if you get the base Maverick, well, it used to be $19,000. If you actually want a Cruise Control, you had to jump up to the next level of equipment. XLT. And that was, a, I think, a $3,500 difference. So yes. even though Cruise Control is probably, you know, 50 bucks in... In parts. Parts and, you know, a little bit more in uh, software. You had to go up 3.5K about uh, to get that. And I think that's exactly what, you know, is causing. And the other part of it, let's face it, Andre, when you're on the configurator uh, and you see all those goodies, it's hard to say no to them. Yeah, because everybody loves convenience, right? They like, you know, the Apple CarPlays and, you know, the nice seats and et cetera, et cetera. And the thing is that... Um, Dealers like it even more because they make a lot more money. So when they configure it, and let's face it, dealers are the ones buying most of all of the vehicles, and thus they're the ones configuring all of the vehicles unless you go in special order or something, which is happening more in America. But yeah. still, the majority of vehicles are bought by dealers, and you know they're not out there uh, to make a little profit. They're out there to make a lot of profit. So number two on our list is... You know, the truck has become the family vehicle, right? It's no longer, like you said before, it was a work vehicle that was simple. Um, it has to take care of the families, which is why crew cabs are the most popular. And also technologies that help you do everything by yourself. Because I think pickup truck represents that Americana, right? I can do it myself. Yes. So I don't need a buddy telling me how to back up my truck to hitch up the trailer. Because my robotic hitch will do it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so Ford recently introduced this feature uh, on some of their higher trim levels that the truck will find the tongue of your trailer by itself and put the hitch right under it for you. Yeah. Uh, it costs money. It costs money. Or, you know, like some stuff that's very useful, like Ford does built-in scales now, mm -hmm. uh, which is a very useful feature. But, you know, once again, you got to pay for that. Yeah. Uh, and um, it's hard sometimes to distinguish between hardware and software because sometimes it's only software, like in the case of full self-driving, unless you, unless you don't have cameras in the car, but the car's going to have cameras anyway. And sometimes it's only hardware, and oftentimes it's a mixture of both. But either way, uh, it adds cost because somebody's got to develop the software and somebody's going to manufacture the hardware. Yeah. You know that. And there's stuff like power steps, you know, for your family and your children to get in this truck, power tailgates. We want it, we want it all, Andre. I want it all. Yeah, I do yeah. too. Yeah, I do yeah. too. Yeah. 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 And speaking of wanting it all, that's number one. Um, guess what? There are a lot more of the more expensive trims out there than there are of the basic trims. Yes. So according to the data by CarEdge.com, their manufacturers, especially in the recent months, uh, are building fewer and fewer base vehicles and more and more high option vehicles. So less work trucks, more fancy trucks. Yeah. So according to their data by CarEdge.com, 6.4% of the Ram 1500 are tradesmen's, which means 93% plus are higher trim levels and more expensive trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you know... Let's face it, Andre, high new truck prices and even high used truck prices are something that everybody likes to complain about. Uh, but the question I think you have to ask yourself, and this may not be a popular opinion, is are you getting a lot more today than you were 10 years ago? Uh, and the answer is hell yes. We just recently bought um, an OBS uh, Ford from 1997 F-250 diesel. Don't tell them everything about we won't, it We won't yet. tell you everything about okay. it. But I was amazed by the amount of advancement in the diesel world from when that truck was the pinnacle of um, heavy-duty you know, diesel transportation haulage. Uh, and let's just use one number. Let's just use one number, right? Back then, that truck, depending if you had a manual or if you had an automatic, towed anywhere from between nine and let's say $12,000. That's a heavy duty 250. Yeah. How much would that same truck tow today, Andre? Between 20 and 22,000. So double. Double. Yeah. Double. And, and you know, that's going to cost more money. Yeah. But that also means more money if you're using it as a work truck because now what would have taken two trips, let's say you're hauling hay, is going to take one trip. Yeah. So you're getting a lot more. You're getting a lot more. We yeah. talked about uh, you're getting safety, you're getting better emissions, you're getting better performance. So, but look, that's not to dis diminish the fact that you know there's a lot of dealers out there who are money hungry mm -hmm. uh, and who are still, especially on the you know premium, let's call them super trucks, 
of course, the Raptors, the Raptor R's, the TRX's, uh, the Chevy uh, ZR2's, you know, uh, you can go down the line, listies. Uh, and they're asking uh, way over sticker for these things. And the reason they're asking way over sticker is because they're getting way over sticker. Yeah, I actually was talking to a local GMC truck dealer, and they told me that the most popular vehicle that they sell right away is the GMC D Denali and AT4. And those are the most expensive GMC trucks you can buy. And those are the ones that are selling the fastest. Yeah, I mean, you know, it takes two to dance, right? <laughs> the dealer and the customer. <laughs> if yeah. you, want. you can't dance by yourself. I mean, you could, but... Yeah, you know, it's not going to go very far. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, once again, you know, here are what we think are the top 10 reasons for truck prices, you know, going through the roof. Uh, is there a lot of uh, meat on the bone here? Hard to say, you know. Uh, I'll give you an example of that. Uh, the manufacturers aren't exactly transparent in terms of uh, how they're configuring the truck. So right now, Ford, is it quarterly? Ford is not a quarterly, it's a GM, reporting sales. Uh, GM is quarterly, Ford yeah. is still monthly. Monthly, but, yeah. but GM used to be quarterly, now they're monthly. And so they're doing their best to kind of obfuscate, to kind of muddy the water. And so they don't break out, for instance, you know, what percentage of their trucks are work trucks, what percentage are, uh, you know, mid-level trucks, and what percentage are high-level trucks. So it's hard, to, it's hard to see and hard to discern exactly what's happening in the market because of that. Uh, and you really have to rely on... Um, Sales data, really. Sales data yeah. from, from public sources before you figure it out. And that's always lagging. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see where this ends up because obviously the manufacturers can jump for the sky. But the question in my mind, Andre, is have they jumped too high? Are they going to burn their wings? And, and, and my sense is uh, they may have. They, yeah. they, they and, really may have. And I think we're starting to see this already. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, truck sales are slowing down a little bit, especially in the half-ton segment, right? And uh, heavy-duty trucks are still very, very uh, needed, and they're still uh, being purchased. But we're already seeing sales slow down. Yeah, we're seeing actually rebates in full-size trucks. Yeah. Uh, and at the end of the day, unless, you know, you, you, you can hate or love dealers, but uh, they're not going to make money unless they sell them. And having trucks sit in inventory, whether they're above uh, MSRP or below MSRP is not good for business. So eventually they're all gonna be below MSRP if they sit there long enough. Exactly. Well, let us know what you think in the comments below. And as always, oldtfl.com is where you'll find everything automotive in one place. I'm gonna go drive that OBS, dude. That's really cool. All right, see you guys next time, yes. ciao.